Now that iOS 15 is now available on the market, I'm gonna go ahead and show you all the awesome hidden features and some cool things you definitely need to know about this new operating system because there is a lot of very useful tools that got integrated. And I'm not talking about the ones that Apple highlighted during their keynote, like the group messages, images, and all that good stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and show you much more than that. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting off with the cool innovations that you can find on the camera app. There's a new thing that's called live text and whenever you highlight your camera over a text or take a picture of some text icons if you look back at it there's now this new cool tool right here which you can actually interact with it like as if you're using a document so you can actually hold them to select it you can look up the dictionary it can also translate as well and in addition to that if you tap here the little icon on the corner will highlight all the text that's possible to be copied and paste. This is extremely useful whenever you're using like serial numbers, uh, taking a picture of serial numbers, VIN numbers, and all that good stuff. That's a fine example of how I used it. Now, another innovation that can be also found similar to like the live text is virtual lookup. Let's just go on Safari real quick. Go on Google, type in the Eiffel Tower, save it on camera roll. If you go back to your camera roll, if you actually swipe up this little eye icon, you can actually use virtual lookup. This will be able to hopefully identify flowers, dogs, animals, trees, and objects, just like this. It's just a cool way to quickly identify stuff in case you're having a hard time knowing what that is. That's basically how you access that. Now, if you ever find yourself in a FaceTime call, there's now portrait mode for FaceTime, which if you tap this little icon right here, it will actually blur out the background. Basically looks like as if you're using your portrait mode filter or setting, I should say. It looks extremely cool and natural, and it doesn't look fady or anything like that, like Zoom calls and stuff like that. This is an awesome feature. So when we were looking for the Eiffel Tower, you may have noticed that the search bar on Safari is down here now. It took me a while to get used to it, but still to this very day, I kind of don't like it. You can reverse back to it, which is kind of nice. If you go into your settings, go down to Safari, and where you see tabs right now by default, thanks to this update, it's tab bar. You could tap, highlight, check mark, single tab, and now when you go back to Safari, it's back to normal. In addition to that, there's some cool gestures that are added on Safari too. So whenever you tap your little tab bar, uh, here you can see the previously open tab, but not only that, you can actually click and drag them and reorganize them if there's a tab you want to keep on top all the time. And then if you like to close them, just use gestures and it closes up like so. Now if you're quickly highlighting like a text, a new feature that came back is the new magnify text selector. You can actually see the line where the cursor is landing when you're selecting the text. This is a really missed feature that was added and removed a long time ago, but now it's back and it's super useful. Now focus is a new feature that got added for our iPhones. So if you bring out control center, a quick way to get access to this is by going here and see where it says focus, long press, and here you'll see the different categories that it has by default. So there's one for personal, work, sleep, driving. And the way I'll describe focus is a, a steroids version, I guess, of do not disturb because there's much more settings you could adjust. So say for example, you create different unique focus modes for other activities like when you're doing sports you create one by tapping the plus right here so custom but we're just gonna go ahead and select fitness and here you'll see the people that you could allow so this way they could bypass the do not disturb function and still be able to receive phone calls and send you messages if you allow it and then here like the selected apps you could have we will be able to bypass the do not disturb function so allow these and then it will basically categorize everything automatically on the top. So that's basically how you can get started with Focus. Highly recommend messing with it and modifying it to your personal preference. Another cool notification thing is if you get if you have a lot of news articles and stuff like that, you know how they bombard you with notifications, notifications, notifications. Well, there's now a new notification summary that should help organize this. So when you actually want to read these notifications, it's all nicely organized. So by going into your settings to enable this, go into notifications, and right here you'll see notification summary. And just go ahead and enable this. You can select the apps that you want to limit in your notifications and based from your previous notifications, it'll actually show you which app actually bombards you the most. And then similar to Focus, you can create custom schedules as well for them. Now, whenever you receive those notifications, 
they're all going to be nicely organized in the, this little section in your notification tab. Now a feature that was only available on iPads is now now can be found on the iPhone. And let's say for example you go on Safari, there's a text or an image you want to click and drag to your messages, you can actually do that. So by holding it down like this, swipe up with the other finger, open up your messages, go into whatever group notification you like to go into, or send it to somebody, you could actually drop it in like so. So you could do this on all the other apps including files, images, videos. Uh, you could click and drag those type of documents, those type of things from one app to the other which is quite nice and there's going to be more support for third parties as well. And then if you have YouTube Premium, Picture in Picture is now supported on the main YouTube app. You no longer have to do that with Safari. So to enable this, quickly just go into your YouTube settings, go into settings on YouTube and down here you should see try new feature tab, tap on here and then Picture in Picture here is where you can actually go ahead and turn this on. It's going to be become available later on, on October 31st, so you no longer have to do this in the settings. But this is how you quickly go and enable this. And now whenever you watch a YouTube video on the YouTube app and you minimize the screen, picture in picture is automatically enabled. You can lower it, change the size of the box, or you could tap these little icons right here to take you back directly to the app super useful and awesome and that's how you could go ahead and enable this again you have to be a premium uh, YouTube member to have access to this new feature but it's now available and that's how you could quickly set it up now if you use apps like white noise to like may help you fall asleep that's now integrated on iOS 15 and to quickly go ahead and enable this just go ahead and hop in your settings once more go into the accessibility tab and scroll down to where you see visual and audio just go ahead and enable background sound and here you can preview the different sounds that it has so there's balanced noise, bright noise, dark noise, ocean, rain, stream you can tap edit to uh, delete some of these because when you tap on one it does download it to your smartphone so the audio is actually in it's stored inside the storage but you're not done there once you do that go ahead and go into your control center and make sure you add hearing. Here you can of course organize it however you like. I'm going to move it all the way up to the very top. And now whenever you bring out control center, you'll see the hearing tab reader here. Long press or tap on it once. Tap the sound, the volume, and turn it on. And now it's playing white noise. So that's how you can quickly enable and turn it on. Turn it on and off without having to go back into settings. Another cool feature that can also be found in the control center that was recently added. If we go back into the control center, go ahead and add text size. And then what this allows you to do if you pop open or go into control center and you tap on text size, here you can actually always control the text size of the device as well as those apps as well, selected apps. So right now we're in Safari, so we can literally have this. So Safari is always at this percentage in text size. So if there's like a third party app that you use a lot and the text font's just annoyingly small, here you could actually like adjust the size for not just one app, but all of them if you want to, or just that one specific app. So they have that control, which is really awesome. All in all, those are my favorite top added features that you can find on iOS 15 that's now added and available currently for iOS 15. There's still a couple features that still is missing like the ID where you can actually put your driver license information on your smartphone as well as the share play which is kind of like screen sharing whenever you're FaceTiming with people you can watch videos together it's all synchronized nicely that's coming out in the near future the compatible iPhones are able to run this latest firmware update is believe it or not the first generation iPhone SE and the iPhone 6s as well as the 6s max or newer so there's a lot of compatible devices on the latest firmware update, which is quite nice. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. If you learned something new, you know what to do. Leave this video a like, as well as help me out a lot. As well, get subscribed, especially since I'm, I'm going to be covering a lot of new Apple software content all this week. So make sure you stick around for that. But in the meantime, if you want to watch something cool that you could do on your iPhone, like create a live wallpaper animation based on anything, you can go ahead and watch that video over there. And the video next to that one, that's just a video YouTube's recommending specifically for you. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Catch you all in the next one. See ya.